Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at national and global energy resources. And we can break these down into two main kinds. We could talk about the non-renewable ones and the renewable ones. What do we mean by renewable energy resources? Well, I'm sure you've uh, come across this quite a lot before in science. But basically, our renewable energy resources, these are being replenished or can be replenished. Or we could say they don't run out. In terms of our non-renewable energy resources, well, these are actually ones that once they have been used, they cannot be replaced. I'm sure you uh, know which the non-renewable energy resources are, but these cannot be replaced. And because they cannot be replaced, that means they are going to run out. The more we use them, the faster they will run out. Okay, so this is what, mean, what we mean by non-renewable and renewable energy resources. In terms of what they are, well, for our non-renewable energy resources, these are coal, oil, gas, and nuclear. And in terms of the first three at the top there, the coal, oil, and gas, we refer to these as the fossil fuels. So I'm going to put FF there. can't fit in the whole word, so let's just put it underneath. It's okay to use abbreviations for your notes, but not for your exam, as long as you know what they mean. So coal, oil, and gas, and nuclear, these are the non-renewable energy resources. In terms of our renewable energy resources, there's seven that we need to know. We have wind, hydroelectric, solar, geothermal, tidal biofuel and waves. So these are the different kinds. Now we need to be able to explain or describe why we need these different types. So they are basically for transport, for heating and electricity. So let's color code our diagram to see which ones are used for which. Coal is used a lot for generating electricity. Oil can be used for generating electricity and gas can be used for generating electricity as well. Nuclear energy is used a lot for generating electricity. In terms of transport, oil is used a lot and gas can be used although it's not used as often. Coal is used for or can be used for heating, so can oil and so can gas. You've heard of gas central heating. So these are the main uses of our non-renewable energy resources. In terms of our renewable energy resources, well all of these are used to generate electricity. All seven are used to generate electricity. We can use solar energy for generating heat and geothermal as well. It's actually probably worth pointing out here when we're talking about solar energy, we have solar cells which transfer light energy into electricity and we have solar panels which absorb the sun's energy, absorb infrared radiation for heating water for example. Okay, so we can differentiate uh, between those two for our solar energy resource. There is an issue with pollution in terms of our non-renewable energy resources and the main one is carbon dioxide, which is released when we burn our fossil fuels. We also have the release of sulfur dioxide when we burn coal, and also when we burn oil, we have sulfur dioxide released as well, and that contributes to acid rain. Nuclear energy has the advantage in that there are no polluting gases that are produced when we generate electricity using nuclear energy, but we do have a major issue because we have radioactive waste that is produced and we have to get rid of that very carefully so it doesn't damage the environment or cause harm to humans. And of course a major issue we should mention here actually with carbon dioxide is that it contributes to the greenhouse effect which in turn leads to global warming which in turn is linked to climate change. So that's quite a major problem with burning fossil fuels. So there's a summary of that, which is going to be quite useful. What we want to do next is actually do a quick evaluation of the renewable energy resources. So we're going to go through those and look at the reliability of those and just very briefly visit how they work. The first one we call hydroelectric. So it's an energy resource that we call hydroelectric. And usually we have a dam which holds back some water and in the dam, there's built a tunnel which water can go through. As the water flows through, it turns turbines and that can generate electricity. Now, in terms of reliability, we can show that as a green band. So that green band is showing that hydroelectric power is quite reliable. But we do need to keep the water behind the dam topped up. And this is usually as a result of rainfall. But also, these are often built in rivers. So the river behind the dam is usually kept topped up because they are built behind a river. Ultimately it does rely on rainfall though. Our second diagram we have our solar cells. These 
transfer, as we said, transfer light energy to electricity. And electricity obviously is very, very useful. So that is a way of generating electricity using a renewable energy resource, that of light. In terms of reliability, we can imagine these are going to be a lot less reliable or have a reliability down the lower end because they rely on sunlight. There is no sunlight at night time and the amount of sunlight falling on the earth is greatly reduced when there's clouds or when it's cloudy. And of course, if we have winter, then there's going to be a lot less light, certainly in the northern and southern hemispheres. So that contributes to the low reliability. We have wind turbines on the right hand side. And again, their reliability could be described as quite low because we need to have wind in, term, in, uh, in order to make them work. And if there's no wind, there's going to be little or no electricity generated. So we need to build those in a place where it's very windy. In the bottom left here, we have a geothermal energy resource. This relies on the fact that there are hot rocks below the surface. And what happens is water is pumped down to the hot rocks, that turns to steam, and that can turn turbines which generate electricity. Unfortunately, you can't just dig up any random place to find hot rocks. It's only available or found in some places around the world. Iceland is a common uh, is a country where they're commonly used because of the presence of hot rocks below the surface. Where it is found, the reliability is very high. On the bottom right here, we have the use of tides to generate electricity. So as the tide comes in, it flows through a tunnel in this structure here, which can generate electricity. And as the tide flows out, the same thing happens. You can generate electricity. So the reliability of this is high because you will always have tides. There are tides day in, day out. But of course, the issue is that it has to be built near the ocean or near the sea. We can also actually use waves. Um, I haven't drawn a diagram for that, but we can use waves to generate electricity as well. The up and down motion of the waves can be used to move structures that generate electricity. Again, this has low reliability because we don't have waves all the time and the, pr the presence of waves relies on the weather and often you need wind. We have low reliability because you need wind to produce those waves and those waves will then generate electricity, but only when they're present. Okay, so that was a summary of the renewable and non-renewable energy resources that we have, what they're used for, and an evaluation of renewable energy resources on this page here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.